Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joseph Hughes. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. I have another book review to do. In fact, I have another Civil War book review to do. Team of Rivals, The Political Genius of Abraham Lincoln by Doris Kearns Goodwin. Okay, now, right out front, i got to tell you, I have actually got the CD version here, the audio version, and I have listened to this book three times. Okay, now, the original time I listened to the book was when I purchased uh, purchased it back in 2007. Uh, the book was published in 2006. Uh, I bought it in 2007, listened to it, thought it was great, thought it was wonderful. Uh, kept it in my collection, of course. And then uh, four or five years later, again, I listened to it again and uh, still thought it was fantastic, loved it. And then uh, actually recently, you know, a couple days ago, I had a rather long trip in the car, so I decided to listen to it for a third time, and I'm going to go ahead and review the book based on all three listenings, and uh, you know, primarily on the, the most recent listening. Okay, now a little, about, a little bit about the author, Doris Kearns Goodwin. Uh, she's a very popular author, uh, very, very popular uh, with the mainstream media, very popular in historical circles. Uh, the book itself, uh, Team of Rivals, The Political Genius of Abraham Lincoln, is a very popular book. It's gotten great reviews. Uh, Miss, Miss Kearns Goodwin has gotten, or Mrs. Kearns Goodwin, has gotten great reviews. I've listened to many interviews she's done. She's a very amiable woman, very articulate. Uh, she's got a great writing style, and she's very well received. Okay, now, that notwithstanding, uh, I would say that Doris Kearns Goodwin is from the, from the church of Abraham Lincoln, or the cult of Abraham Lincoln. Okay, now, as many of you know, if you've watched my videos or read uh, or, or, or watched the reviews I've done on different books, uh, I've kind of gone through a re-evaluation of my understanding of American history, and I'm kind of kind of taking an alternate view of American history that's not necessarily part of the mainstream. Okay, now, in American history, when it comes to the American Civil War, there are two different predominant narratives. There's a northern narrative and a southern narrative. Uh, southern narrative is uh, basically the lost cause narrative. Uh, Robert E. Lee figures prominently in the southern narrative uh, Robert E. Lee is kind of the Jesus figure, uh, the demigod figure of the Southern narrative. He's the courtly gentleman, the kind man, you know, the, 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 the good and noble man, uh, the great general, doesn't make mistakes. Uh, basically, uh, the Southern narrative has uh, Robert E. Lee as the God figure in the narrative. Uh, the Lost Cause narrative as a whole, the South was the noble South. They were the good guys. They were fighting for states' rights. Slavery, eh, eh, it was just a very small part of it. And the only reason they lost is because they, they didn't have the material resources of the North. But otherwise, they were the good guys. That's the Southern narrative. And, of course, Robert E. Lee is the Jesus figure in the Southern narrative. Okay, now, of course, the Northern narrative has Abraham Lincoln at the center of it. Abraham Lincoln is the Jesus figure. And he is perfect he didn't, make, he didn't make mistakes, all of his decisions were wonderful, and he couldn't find the right general. He had to go through six or seven generals before he finally got the right general, and then he finally found the right general, the one that, who, could, who could do the, the arithmetic, and then he finally won the war. And then at the end of the war, he was assassinated and martyred, and Abraham Lincoln is the Jesus figure in the northern narrative. Okay, now, of course, the, these two mainstream narratives, the, the northern narrative and the southern narrative, have a thousand holes in them. And you can shoot holes in those narratives all day long. Okay, now, of course, there is some truth to each narrative, but there's just as much fiction in the narratives as there is truth. Okay, now, in this book, Doris Kearns Goodwin takes the northern narrative and she smothers it. She smothers it with love and devotion. Now, 
the, 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 the northern narrative has been built up over 150 years. Hundreds and even thousands of northern historians have just done kind of a circular thing where they all quote each other and they all reinforce each other and they just repeat the same story over and over and over again. Abraham Lincoln was wonderful. Even his bad decisions were brilliant. He was a genius. He chose, he chose a cabinet and that is indirectly the subject of this book, uh, Abraham Lincoln's cabinet, team of rivals. Uh, he chose he, he chose scoundrels, and he, he chose schemers, and he chose people who didn't like him, people who were trying, who thought they'd be pres better president than him. And, but it turned out perfectly because Abraham Lincoln planned it that way. He planned to have all these schemers. He planned to have all these, these dastardly characters in his cabinet, and that was the best way to do it. And Doris Kearns Goodwin takes this to the extreme. Uh, in fact, if... If you read this book, you'll think that Edwin M. Stanton is a kind and caring and loving person. Uh, yeah, he's irascible, but oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Uh, when in reality, if you read objective, uh, objective history about Edwin M. Stanton, nobody liked him. None of his contemporaries liked him. They all hated him. They all universally... Edwin M. Stanton is considered to be a schemer in the extreme. He was, he, was, he was the epitome of the deep state. He betrayed all three administrations he worked within. He worked in the Buchanan administration and he leaked information to the incoming Republican administration to the detriment of his own administration. While he was the war secretary, he did things, he, he did things behind Abraham Lincoln's back uh, most of the tyrannical things that happened during the Lincoln administration, this man, Edwin M. Stanton, was part of it. And then, of course, uh, during the Andrew Johnson administration, uh, Edwin M. Stanton is what the impeachment revolved around. Andrew Johnson tried to fire him. He refused to leave. And there was a showdown, and then there was an impeachment. So, Doris Kearns Goodwin sprinkles that Abraham Lincoln fairy dust all over her entire cabinet, including Edwin M. Stanton. She points out that, that uh, he, he went to widow, widows' houses and he, he shared the terrible news about their, their husbands dying during the Civil War. And, of course, Edwin M. Stanton knew that he was a, a very hated figure. He knew he was a very controversial figure. So he did the, he did the, the equivalent of 1863 photo ops. He, he went around and he went on a, a campaign uh, and he found people who could, who could bolster his, his, his bad reputation. Uh, but he was a scoundrel of the highest order. Uh, so much so a scoundrel of the highest order, William Tecumseh Sherman refused to even shake his hand when they were having the parade of his army in Washington, D.C. And he was proud of that. Uh, if you want to know about Edwin M. Stanton, Read Ulysses S. Grant's words about Edwin M. Stanton. But that doesn't exist in Doris Kearns Goodwin's world. She has to have Abraham Lincoln perfect. And, and, she, and she can't have Abraham Lincoln choosing scoundrels to be in, in, in his cabinet. Or at, at a very minimum, it needs to calculate out to genius. The political genius of Abraham Lincoln. That reveals Doris Kearns Goodwin's hand. This is a worship piece. This, this belongs in the pseudo-religion section of history. Okay? Uh, now, I, I, would give this, I would give this book now uh, three stars out of five. Now, originally when I read it uh, you know, 15 years ago, I would have given it a five out of five because I belonged to the Church of Abraham Lincoln at the time. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I love Abraham Lincoln as much as anyone should. He was a good man. He did the best he could under circumstances. Uh, but he was operating under a chaotic situation. He was the first one to do what he did. In fact, he's been the only one to do what he did. And unfortunately, he made a lot of errors in the process. And some of those errors increased the length of the Civil War and increased the number of casualties that took place in the Civil War. So, uh, there's no need to worship Abraham Lincoln. There's no need to worship uh, Robert E. Lee. Uh, we can have history 
truthful history. You know, you know, maybe maybe what has kind of changed the way I look at history, and and a lot of historians are reevaluating uh, the American Civil War. Maybe it's our time of fake news, where we've got where we can see very clearly uh, we have biased news one way or the other, and these narratives are being etched out, and some of them be, are being put in cement. And a hundred years from now, people will be victim to some of that fake news and fake history. And unfortunately, American, American history, the, Amer the history of the American Civil War, there is some fake history that has found its way in there and etched its way and, and found some cement and has been told all the way down to this day. So uh, it's a decent listen or a decent read, uh, but you have to take it with a grain of salt. This is a worship piece. This is, this is Doris Kearns Goodwin's devotional to Abraham Lincoln, uh, her Jesus. So, uh, I don't know if I recommend it. You know, if, if, if you want to if you you feel some warm and fuzzies about Abraham Lincoln, uh, by all means, read the book. By all means, listen to it if you get the, the audio version. Uh, but otherwise, there are more objective works out there. So, anyways, this is Joseph Hughes. I hope you enjoyed uh, the review. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, uh, click like. More people will see it. Otherwise, this is Joseph Hughes signing out.